With the release of Ragnarok on the horizon, many people are revisiting the fantastic 2018 game that is a continuation of the God of War canon chronology, or choosing to play it for the first time. This soulful tale of a father and son on an epic realm-hopping adventure to scatter ashes from the highest peak in all the realms is equally touching as it is action-packed, not to mention graphically impressive and a wonderful new direction for the series. I have played this game quite a lot and I want to impart some wisdom to those who are new to God of War because there are some areas where the game does not hold your hand, despite a few things that I will be mentioning being essential to your success, especially for those trophy hunters out there. Hello, I'm Heather at Amalgamingle and today I want to outline 5 things I wish I knew before playing God of War. Those who have already played the game will be well aware that some realms are inaccessible. When I first played God of War I had no idea that they couldn't be travelled to and I assumed that I had missed something and I searched the world far and wide for an uncompleted quest. But alas, despite being heavily referenced in the game, the three realms of Asgard, Valheim and Svartalfheim cannot be accessed. Asgard is one of the most well-known realms of Norse mythology and is depicted as a city with high towers protected by a great wall. Although Asgard itself hasn't been shown so far, we are able to hear stories about it and are awarded pieces of Asgardian steel. Valheim is home to the Vanir gods and described as a beautiful realm of nature with a tragic history of a centuries long war. It is said that the war was stopped by the marriage of Freya and Odin and when the marriage ended Odin closed the path to Valheim and the rest of the realms. A teaser view of Valheim can be viewed through the window of Freya's hut which depicts stunning flowers in bloom amongst a thick forest of trees under an autumn sky. Svartalheim is said to be home of the dwarves and access to this realm was sealed by Odin to avoid any alliances between the dwarves and the Vanir. This realm seems to be the most mysterious of the three as we know very little about it. However, the realm travel door does depict a forested world under a night sky. Similar to Asgard, Svartalfheim steel can be found in rare chests around the world in God of War. All three of these realms do show up in the central room where you can travel to different realms but they still cannot be travelled to. The reason for this is uncertain, however, I believe Santa Monica Studios intended to grant access to these realms through DLCs, but these DLCs never happened. We cannot say for certain if these realms will be explored in Ragnarok or not, but after hearing all of Mimir's tales about these inaccessible realms, my interest is definitely piqued. Runic attacks are essentially elemental magical abilities that can be equipped to Kratos' weapons and produce special attacks that can give you a boost in battle. Weapons modding and attachments is not something we haven't seen before in other RPGs, however, these runic attacks can sometimes mean the difference between winning and losing in battle. There are several runic attacks that can be complete game changers and can be acquired in different ways. Some are gained as part of the main story, some are given as a reward for defeating certain enemies in battle, and some can be bought at Brock and Sindri's shops providing you have the right resources. My personal favourite runic attack is the Wrath of the Frost Ancient, which can be gained quite easily very early in the game. It's an aimed light runic attack that shoots a powerful ice beam from the Leviathan Axe that stuns and damages all enemies. There are a lot of different runic attacks that suit everyone's playstyles and can be equipped to each weapon. Furthermore, Atreus also has his own runic summons that conjures up astral allies onto the battlefield and can be extremely useful. I do have a lot of different attacks that I would like to discuss but I don't want to include any spoilers in this video. I recently created a list video on the best runic attacks and runic summons in God of War so be sure to check that out. So my next entry is all about resurrection stones. Resurrection stones are a little bit of a secret in the game because at no point does anyone in the game mention them or explain. You simply have to stumble across them and realise the potential all on your own. Resurrection stones are a fantastic resource that allows Atreus to save Kratos from the brink of death and can be purchased at Brock and Sindri's shops dotted around the world. I have to be honest, I don't know if I could have completed this game without them, let alone got the Platinum Trophy. The game does not highlight Resurrection Stones for the player as far as I'm aware, but seasoned God of War players will know how useful and often crucial having one at hand at all times can be. 
Even with a fully maxed out HP bar, some enemies can deal devastating blows that can catch you off guard and having the ability to have some kind of second wind can give you a fighting chance. This often happened to me when collecting realm tiers that spat out enemies I was too under level to take on. There are three kinds of resurrection stones, simple, superior and berserker. The simple and superior resurrection stones revive Kratos with a certain amount of health and the berserker stone resurrects Kratos with full rage and a small amount of health. It's important to note that you can only store a single resurrection stone in your inventory at any one time, so choose wisely which stone would be the most beneficial to you. I often choose to use the superior resurrection stone for higher health restoration so that I can then spam the enemy with runic attacks, but other players might prefer to be revived with full rage to pummel enemies up close and personal. It is a shame that only a single stone can be held at any time, however if the player was able to stock up then I imagine this would give us an unfair advantage in the game and make it way too easy. Perhaps a maximum of three stones would be preferable so that you didn't have to replace the used stone every time, or the game could allow you to buy one of each stone. That would be the ideal scenario for me. Even gamers who have not yet played God of War will have heard on the grapevine how Valkyries are formidable foes and if you try to battle them unprepared you will die. A lot. There are in total 9 fast and fierce Valkyries in the game that can be found in hidden chambers that you gain access to as the story progresses. There is a lot of information on the internet about the best armour, attacks and techniques you can use to defeat these Valkyries, but to be very honest, none of them seem to work for me when I accidentally stumbled across my first Valkyrie. After many failed attempts where I continuously got my face literally stomped on, I found that the best defence is a good offence. Max out your runic attack stat as much as possible, have a resurrection stone on standby and equip the talisman of unbound potential. This talisman is fantastic because it refreshes all runic attacks and allows you to continually maintain the offensive. Of course, during battle you will also need to dodge, roll and run around to avoid enemy attacks, but spamming runic attacks is the best way to survive a Valkyrie encounter. I have my personal favourite runic attacks and runic summons, but it is best to experiment with them and find out which attacks work best for you and your playstyle. Unlike some other games where companions are nothing but a useless liability, Atreus is actually a very useful and powerful ally. I often found myself having Kratos hang back and placing Atreus and his bow in the forefront in battle, particularly with flying or unusually agile enemies such as Nightmares and Revenants. It is easy to overlook Atreus' potential, but if you do invest in him, then you can clearly see how valuable he can actually be. Not only can Atreus' arrows provide substantial battle support and assist in solving environmental puzzles, but Atreus can also produce runic summons. Atreus can also have his own armour that can be very helpful. The legendary runic vestment increases Atreus' recovery speed when injured by an enemy and it comes with several perks. The armour features health stone assist which gives Atreus the ability to find health stones and heal Kratos when he is injured and the health stone enhancement feature increases the potency of said health stones. Additionally this armour has runic attunement which makes Atreus' arrows deal greater damage for a duration after a runic summoned. Although you cannot control Atreus the same way you can control Kratos, it is nice to be able to command him in battle and have that additional backup. Holy fire. When I tell you to fire. So, there you have it. There's just a handful of things I wish I knew before playing God of War. I cannot express how excited I am for the release of Ragnarok. It has to be one of my most anticipated releases still to come this year, alongside Hogwarts Legacy. I really hope they are able to recapture all of the things that made God of War so special, whilst also exploring new personal conflicts. It will be very interesting to see how Kratos handles the parenting of a teenager. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you agree with this list. I've been Heather at Amalgamingle and thank you very much for watching.